there i was here my footprint initials kind of a strange circular that might be a fossil this is dangerous stuff here oh my gosh there's a big roll of barbed wire and what may be an animal corral here and there are my friends with the skull right there there's a lot of bones out here this one's still got some meat on it. That's weird, everything just got silent. Dead silence, something about to happen. I'm feeling really uneasy right now. All right, just gassed up. It's um, all like paying 4.19 a gallon for gas. What are you gonna do? Um, at any rate, it's uh, 7.20. Uh, it's about the same time I wanted to leave, so the sun's already up. Let's uh, hit the road and get out there. Ah, uh, nothing like the open road. That right up there, that kind of settlement, that's uh, kind of sort of a Corn Creek Visitor Center. It's, we're on our way. Um, temperature today, we're looking at 44 degrees. Now that is not up in the mountains. You could expect it to be 20 degrees cooler up there. So uh, 34, 24 degrees up there, it's gonna be a cold one. So I've got the military poly pro top. I'll put it on if I have to, but uh, we're gonna keep moving. As always, we don't uh, stop too long. So hopefully we'll stay warm, but uh, we're almost there to the uh, Corn Creek Road where we're gonna air down and then take that long, 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 long trek up Alamo Road and then uh, further out to our destination. Let's do it. I'm always anxious traveling down this road. You know, we're heading out in those mountains. You just never know what we're gonna run into today. Deep, deep in the Sheep Range Mountains. Tower deflator's on, airing down to about uh, 20 PSI and then we'll get going. All right, I got 7.50 a.m. on the clock. Uh, you can see 46 degrees and I've aired down to about uh, 23, 24 PSI. Um, some people say go lower, um, but I keep it about that because if I had to limp home, uh, if the air compressor crapped out, I could. So yeah, we've got a long, long way ahead of us. Do have a new piece of equipment for this trip, the Garmin 66i. It is a satellite communicator. Tracking is on and I do have some folks tracking me. I know you guys have been after me for years to get a satellite communicator and I finally just broke down and said, screw it and did it. I mean, you never know. But where we're going, there is definitely no cell signal, so we're gonna need it out there. Like just a flat dirt road wouldn't be too difficult to navigate especially in a high clearance vehicle the truth is you hit a rock or an obstacle the wrong way at the at the, too fast of a speed and uh, your whole day could be over you can get a flat tire busted axle broken rim i mean anything you name it so these roads are can be treacherous even if it looks smooth like it is right now relatively flat you just gotta always keep your eyes open for anything that might come up in front of you unexpectedly all right passing hidden forest cabin road that is the way to the uh Hidden forest out the cabin out there. Um, we did make a video going out there earlier this year in the snow, but we're not heading up there today, obviously. It's a five mile hike from the trailhead, so it's quite a ways. We're going much further up Alamo Road. We've got about 8.30 on the clock, so we're obviously off the main road. This is one of the side roads um, that's off Alamo Road, deep in the Desert National Wildlife Refuge. And uh, so far, it's fairly smooth. I mean, it's kind of some sand. Uh, we need to put in four wheel drive a little, in a little bit if we have to. But um, where we're going is, is way out here to the end of this road. I've never been out there before. So if I could drive all the way to destination, I will. But I'm 99% sure that somehow the end of this road is blocked off. Uh, closed to vehicle traffic. So we'll have to park there and uh, hike to our destination, which is fine. All right, I just put in four wheel drive. And um, here's something I wasn't planning on. Um, never assume the road's gonna be passable. So this road so far is passable, but um, I just put it, like I said, I just put it in four wheel drive. It's getting kind of rough here. And this road may well have been torn up after the uh, rains in September. You can see in the road, uh, looks like uh, vehicles have been through here before, but uh, where we're going, like I said, it's really rough. We've got a high clearance four wheel drive, so it's not an issue for us. But if we get to an obstacle, we can't get past, that's the end of the video. We won't be going any further, at least not out here today. So hopefully the road will be passable the entire way. If it's like this, no issues. But if it's anything really big, ravines or road washed out, yeah, all bets are off. And I thought that was like an animal, a porcupine or something. <laughs> Let's keep going. This area is a deep wash and I don't like driving through this stuff because even with four wheel drive, you can get stuck in deep sand and gravel. 
So I'm gonna keep on going and make it as far as I can. If I can get through this area, we'll be okay. But uh, it's just really challenging. I see tire tracks here, people have been through. So somebody's been through here, obviously, so it looks passable. But uh, we're just gonna be real careful and uh, watch our where we're going. I'm gonna stop to take a quick break here. Uh, you can see this road is, um, it can be a deep wash in spots. So this was like a raging river. I don't like driving through this stuff. It's easy to get stuck, even with four wheel drive, high clearance vehicles. So we're pretty remote. There is zero cell signal here. And like I said, for this trip, I have some little uh, different, instead of the ham radio, I have the Garmin 66i, which is a satellite communicator. It tracks me. Um, I did confirm my buddy, good trusted companion, Woodchuck is tracking me and sends my location every 10 minutes. Future videos, I may use this and tweet my location. Um, I'll have to look into the technicalities of that and privacy and whatnot, but I may end up tweeting my location for those who follow me on Twitter. Anyway, um, you never know what you're finding out here. So I took a break here because, check this out. Recognize this, do you know what it is? F-16 canopy, yep, a canopy from an F-16 fighter jet. It's been out here a very long time. So I did my research on this. Um, actually, a sharp-eyed viewer is the one who sent me the information. This canopy is from the uh, early to mid-1980s. Uh, F-16 fighter, you can see how thick the glass is here. That is some pretty thick stuff and clearly it broke. So what I'm assuming happened here is the pilot was flying along somewhere up there, had some sort of a mishap, ejected. Uh, the canopy flew here, he uh, parachuted somewhere around here and the aircraft crash wreckage is uh, within 300 feet of here. If you want to see the uh, actual video where I did a full uh, exploratory of this wreckage, uh, check it out. It's uh, Right there, yep, yeah, right there. And uh, that is on my channel right now live. Check it out, um, F-16 found crash wreckage if you wanna see any more about this crash. But uh, at any rate, that's where we gotta go in this wash, let's, uh, let's keep on going. Another great adventure, you guys ready? Weren't we just doing this last week? Yeah, we were. Um, uh, remote mountain expedition. We we're not far from here, just um, a few miles that way. Anyway, we're at a really remote spot and uh, I don't have the ham radio notice. I've got the Garmin 66i satellite communicator. You guys have been on me for years to get satellite communication. I finally did it, so I've got this, it's great. And, and go figure, satellite communicator, most remote spot of the sheep range. I got five bars of 5G signal out here, believe it or not. Uh, but that's probably not gonna last once we get in the mountains. I'll be glad to have this. Anyway. Full gear, backpacks fully loaded. I've got a military polypro top. I don't need it out here. It's like 50 degrees uh, with the sun shining, feels great. But if something happens that get caught out here at night, this uh, this extra insulation, believe me, is gonna be needed. No breakfast today. I didn't, uh, didn't heat it up. I ate before I left. We left about 7 a.m. Um, it's about 9.15, almost 9.20 right now. So this is about the time I wanna start. We're heading out there into those mountains um, to what I believe what appeared to be on Google Earth, uh, a cross. Uh, somebody made a giant cross in the ground. It doesn't look natural. Um, it could be uh, where somebody turned around on a vehicle. It could be It could be natural, I doubt it though. Some, maybe somebody made it, or maybe that cross is the final resting place at Kenny Beach, you just never know. This area where we're going is about, uh, I don't know, 10 to 15 miles north of the old mine where the last trace of Kenny was found. So it's still a remote mountain expedition. But uh, let's not sit here and chit chat. Let's head on out there and get hiking. That's what you're here for. Ah, it feels great to be out here in the mountains again. Um, you can see hiking obviously is permitted, ATVs are not, but uh, take a look at the ground. Um, in addition to hoof prints that you could see right here, bighorn sheep, no doubt. Um, this is really not conducive to driving a vehicle out here. I mean, look, it's it's some rough stuff. Uh, even with four-wheel drive, you're just not going to make it. A not even ATV, dirt bike maybe, but it's going to be rough going even a dirt bike. Hiking's our best bet. So it's tough to see the road, even though you can kind of see it on Google Earth. Um, but I've got it mapped out on the uh, GPS app, and um, I should get us to where we're going. So let's keep on going. Traverse this brush here, which I don't like because these things kind of like foxtails and they get stuck in your socks and clothes and just kind of work their way in and just kind of jab you. Nasty stuff. But yeah, it looks like there may have been a road here at one time. There's not anymore, but uh, this route we're gonna go. Very rocky today too. Just keep, just keep going. Okay, we officially started the clock. 
You can see the uh, truck back there behind this little cactus tree. And uh, we are walking up an ancient road uh, deep in the wilderness towards uh, what we believe looks like an old cross. That beep you're hearing is the uh, Garmin GPS. Anyway, we're going towards an old cross that I saw in the ground. Um, and it's near some of the springs out here, so I don't know what else is out there. And just as before, the only way out there is uh, on foot hiking. So some of the stuff, maybe my truck could have made it, but all this really thick brush, I just would not drive through it. And plus the road is really rough in spots. Elevation, we're about 5,700 feet. Temperature is 50, but uh, it feels much warmer because there's no wind out here and the sun is out. So far it's fine for hiking. And uh, that's it, should be good to go. Well, once we got past that initial kind of a uh, rocky area, it looks like this opened up to an ancient road. I knew there was an old road out here, so you never know what we're gonna find. I've got several points mapped out, clearings, maybe agave burn pits, maybe old primitive campsites or something, but uh, you never know what you're gonna find. So we're gonna keep our eyes open and anywhere there's a road, there could be something interesting. So keep your eyes open. All my videos, you guys always end up seeing things that I miss. So you're as big a part of this adventure as I am. Just keep going. All right, our first man-made uh, object, you see it yet? You'd have to be blind not to, it's a rock cairn. Somebody put this here, I'm guessing, as a marker of sorts. It's kind of a nice area for a break, it looks like here, but yeah, somebody put this rock here in here to mark something. You never know what they're marking. They're marking the trail or did they stash something out here? It's really hard to say. They could have stashed something in the bushes. Don't decide their own possibility. We have found uh, caches of water and supplies and uh, you look through there and sometimes you see a rock, sometimes it's something else. I think that's a rock over there. Taking a look, yeah, it's gotta be a rock. We don't really got time to deviate too much. We gotta keep going. Anyway, um, do people build rock cairns for the hell of it or just say, hey, this is the trail? Well, obviously it's the trail, but um, I don't know. Anybody can drive to the point where I park to. Um, you do need kind of a high clearance four wheel drive, but here in the Las Vegas area, plenty of people have those. And then of course, anybody can hike out here. A lot of people do. I am a, I'm a beast hiker, but I'm not the only beast hiker. There are other people who could do this hike. And I know you guys say, oh, bring somebody with you, bring somebody with you. But uh, honestly, it's, it's tough for me to find somebody, A, that is ready, willing, and able to do this, and B, somebody I can get along with and trust. A lot of good people out there, but uh, sometimes linking up with the right person just uh, just is easier said than done. So that's why we do these trips solo. But my um, trusted compadre Woodchuck uh, tracks me from Austin, Texas, although right now he's in Europe. Still tracking me, uh, Garmin. Uh, he's tracking me on the Garmin site. And uh, when I have internet, of course, he tracks me on, uh, on the regular map. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, the sad fact is a lot of people, friends, family, whatever, they don't have the time to sit in front of a computer and track you. They may set a reminder, you know, pull up an app or something if they think about it. But for the most part, you come out here, you're on your own. There is nobody here. And uh, even though we did pull a brief signal out there, I can assure you we are at a very, very remote location. Let's keep on going. And you guys hear me panting. Like I said, it's an uphill battle at a high elevation. So you try it and see how well you breathe. Oh man. Interesting train out here. Now today I am wearing the glove liners again. It's just a super light glove to wear to protect my hands. Probably take them off in a moment here. And uh, they make, these vinyl gloves make great glove liners. So I wear them now. Way out there, I think, Mile and a half, two miles is where we were last weekend. Super remote. This is the other side. Why didn't I just go there from here? Well, I probably could have. But uh, between here and there is really rugged. And there's some points on the other side I want to check out. Anyway, enough jibber jabber. Let's just keep hiking. All right.
right, we're coming through a wash here, and uh, I'm sure the recent rains is probably a raging river. But of course, it rains once or twice a year out here, heavy, and that's when uh, when this is a river. Oh, looks like another hoof print there, bighorn sheep maybe. Anyway, like I said, um, dirt bikes and things like that are not permitted off designated roads out here, and I don't want to film myself doing something illegal. I try to maintain a good relationship with the uh, with the officials out here in the uh, Desert National Wildlife Reserve. Here's another rock cairn somebody made. So it's a marker for something. Now keep in mind there may be nothing at all out here. Just a spring or something, but uh, there could very well be some other stuff too. It's uh, it's so remote that a lot of not a lot of people come out here. All right, just for the record, those Altama boots with the soles that wore out there are soft like tennis shoes. I gave those a rest. I do have the Bellevilles on today. They're comfortable. They are a little clunkier, a little heavier, but uh, they're comfortable, almost like walking barefoot on a carpet. Um, and right now they're fine. But I wore these on the uh, 11 mile Red Rock Canyon hike and my feet were sore. So I figured if this is an eight mile round trip, more or less, it'd be a good way to find out if these boots can cut it or not, or if they need to be replaced. All right. We're gonna wash there and I think the road continues forward because checking the GPS is pretty much a straight shot. I don't see people footprints per se yet, but I do see animal footprints and these little dots are like hooves. So I'm sure it's bighorn sheep. Or, now there are wild donkeys and, and uh, well coyotes, yes, but wild donkeys and wild horses. I don't know about the higher elevation, but the lowlands, yes. Uh, the Cold Creek area, there are a lot of wild donkeys and horses. I've seen them out there. You're not supposed to feed them or approach them, but they approach you because people do feed them. And most of them are fairly friendly. Not so much the donkeys, but the horses. Uh, at any rate, out here, biggest thing is the bighorn sheep, mountain lions, of course, and coyote. But the only four-legged animal I'm worried about attacking us is a mountain lion, and they generally stay away. It's the two-legged animals out here that are up to no good that, uh, that I'm worried about. One of the other channels, I think it was TVR Exploring. Check them out. Um, He's got a great video where he does a layout of his gear. And uh, when he goes over his pistol, he says there's only one time he needed a pistol. He said they're at a remote area and they came across some folks doing some illegal mining. And these folks had uh, AR-15s. And they said just the fact that uh, they started going for the rifles and these guys put their hands on their pistols and the other guy just kind of stopped. They didn't want to escalate the situation. So, can't say for sure if that's how it went down, but that's what he said. But uh, one thing I do have no doubts about is there are people out here. They know there's no law out here, so you never know what you're going to run into. I mentioned in the uh, uh, remote mountain expedition video, some people have some grow operations, weed grow operations, illegal ones, and they tap into these springs to get water for the crops and we are going by some spring. So, you know, a road like this is not out to the room possibility to see that. And they, they have booby traps, they defend it. So gotta be ready for everything. On the clock, 0.92 miles, 249 foot elevation. All right, so this is a good sign. Here's an old rusty can, probably from uh, back in the days, I guess. I can't tell what kind of top it had on, but um, that's a sign that there was some people out here at one point civilization. So yeah, maybe we'll find something out here. So far, that's the only people trash I've seen. Let's keep on going. Uh, we got about three and a half or so miles to go to our destination. And so far, it's really not too bad. It is uphill, but it's not an extreme uphill climb. And it's mostly flat on an old ancient road. So um, we'll keep our eyes open and keep on going. All right, here's a, uh, uh, what is it? Cicada, cicada skin, whatever. Uh, these bugs kind of molt and shed their skin. Haven't seen them out here too much, but that's the first one I've seen. And who knows how old it is. Not a big deal, but anything notable of interest, I try to film just to kind of show you that it's not just a regular boring hike. So keep my eyes open for anything else that we see. Bones, 
lot of this wood here looks like bones, but it's not. But we do run into a lot of bones out here. So right now we're sticking on this ancient road, but off to the sides, you just never know what's out there. A cabin, an old campsite, a mine, anything. I didn't see anything notable on Google Earth other than a few clearings. And last time I checked Gaia, they had not uh, yet populated on the map. But uh, we'll at least get to this cross point. And uh, may or may not be able to see the shape of a cross, but I sure saw it from satellite view. So I just want to see what's out there. If we ran a food, we had to. You've got these uh, uh, kind of uh, agave or cactus fruits, whatever they are. They're definitely edible. They're bitter if you eat them raw, you've got to roast them. But they can be eaten raw, as we saw somebody on the last hike roasted one. But you see what the kind of plants they grow on. Um, we could probably build a fire and roast them in the open if we had to, or just bite the bullet and eat them cowboy style, as bitter as they are, if we were starving. But yeah, there are ways of to get sustenance out here to keep yourself going if you had to. On the menu today, we got, uh, what do I have? I got breakfast skillet, freeze dried, a little bit of Halloween candy, and a couple of uh, Cliffs bars, which hopefully should be enough. Like I said, if something goes wrong, we're really unplanned and we're stuck out here. We need every bit of food and water we can have till rescue arrives. And believe it or not, and I still can't understand why, I've got two bars of signal out here. So, turns out the Garmin, at least in this point, isn't totally necessary, because we've got internet. It may be slow, but we've got two bars. But it's just uh, this one area, I mean, we can go up, you know, 100 feet and lose signal the rest of the day. You just never know in these mountains. Most of this road I could have taken in the truck. It's just a few spots I couldn't have got around. More stack rocks it looks like. So obviously people have been out here. And uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot, but my eyes are staying on the road, watching where I'm going. I check the GPS every now and then, make a decent progress. Uh, I would guess maybe we have about three miles to go. Which is a lot, but compared to uh, 12 and a half miles last weekend, it's not that much. Didn't do a whole lot of exercising this weekend. I mean, I did my uh, uh, gym work, 35 minutes a day. But as far as footwork, um, walking, jogging, running, not very much, just enough to get my steps in. Um, I knew this hike was coming up and I wanted to recover from last weekend, so I tried to take it easy on the feet and legs. Not 18 anymore, a little bit older, not much, just a little. But I feel great so far. Hell, I'm almost starting to sweat up here. Nice open area, who knows what we'll see. Let's keep going. Continuing on, seeing a lot of these uh, down trees in the middle of this old decrepit road, ancient road. So it would have been tough to get past and I would have had to manually move these out of the way. I'm also seeing a piece of broken glass. More broken glass up here. Um, not sure how old this oh, trip, have a nice trip last fall. Not sure how old this bottle is, kind of a square bottle. But uh, people are bringing bottles up here, usually booze or something, but it's hard to say. It's definitely a, it's a different terrain that we're used to hiking. The broken glass can only be brought out here by a person. And people leave things. Traces of civilization is what we're looking for. And of course the ultimate goal is, uh, should Kenny Beach have hiked this far out, did he come out here? Is there any trace of him? Because, like I said, where we are, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 miles more or less, as the crow flies from that old abandoned mine shaft where his phone was found. Now it's either a wrong possibility he could hiked out here. All right. Down and up, let's keep going. So on foot, this is, this is absolutely no problem. Dirt bike, it's a little rough, but doable. 
Um, the truck, it's really rough. And like I said, a lot of these pieces of wood that appear to have washed down here would have had to be moved out of the way. So you could see that uh, even if you did bring a vehicle out here, it would have been difficult or next to impossible. It would have been tough. So that's why hiking really is the only way. Um, it's kind of a strange circular. That might be a fossil. Looks like it might be some kind of a um, um, mollusk or something maybe. They're out here. They're definitely out here. If you come to Las Vegas, you don't have to come all the way out here. But at the end of Corn Creek Road is a visitor center. They have like a little small museum in there. It's, uh, what, 40 minutes or so from the Vegas Strip. At least check out the visitor center. It's really interesting if you like this kind of stuff. These areas here are very remote. Some people have been out here before and hiked and said, oh my God, I had no idea how, how difficult or rugged or remote this area is. It's, it's, it's out there, believe me. It's no joke. All right. Clearly the rushing water created this. I'm guessing the recent September rains when I had some monsoon rains in Las Vegas. So I'm hiking really slow. I'm definitely in low gear going up this. But uh, the truck, an emergency could have made it, but I'm not gonna take my truck up here and risk busting something if I don't have to. But you can see how rough that is. And our elevation is climbing. On the clock, 1.6 miles, 46 elevation gain in damn near an hour. All right. Here is something I'd never seen in Nevada, but I've seen these as a kid. And they absolutely creeped me the hell out as a kid terrified me but I didn't know they were in Nevada this right here is called a Jerusalem cricket I don't know if it's dead or alive but you can see him in there I'm guessing you can if not I would have already posted a picture I think he's dead but these are affectionately called a potato bug a Jerusalem cricket potato bug I think they do bite I'm not sure and they might also make a noise but uh, we'd find these in the house and they're just big creepy looking bug things didn't think they were in Nevada. That's strange. But anyway, that's it. Jerusalem Cricket, look them up online. Let's keep going. We're approaching a, a high point up here. This should be a good vantage point to see the rest of the area. And I'm sure we still got some climbing to go. Um, 500 foot elevation gain, and I calculated about 1700, so I need to get about 1200 feet to go. All right, great view up here. All uh, right, we got poo. Nothing notable about poo except this one here looks like it's got some seeds in there. Um, maybe coyote or something. This little runny. So whatever it is, it's been eating seeds and fruits or something. I'm not sure what kind of animal. It doesn't really look like coyote, but unless it's runny or something. But like I said, from a scientific perspective, you could tell a lot about the poo that you come across. This here is, uh, like I say, clearly an old road. It's a shame it's not open. It'd be great to drive out here, but the fact that it's closed to traffic just uh, makes it more probable that if we do come across anything, it's gonna be untouched by modern, modern people. Looking around, you see anything out there yet? I don't, but I'm looking. Those mountains off that way is Nevada National Test Site. Um, it's no man's land, it's, it's Air Force testing area. Maybe not these mountains here, but beyond there just a little bit. Um, we passed on the way in. Um, that is basically a military, you can't go out there. Here's some uh, can lids. Another can here, uh, looks like it might be aluminum can. Hard to say, tin cans are the old ones. Yeah, that's got a pull tab on it, so it's not that old. So somebody might have camped here at one point in time, but not recently. I don't know the clock. 2.19 miles, 700 foot elevation gain, 78 minutes, heart rate 136 beats per minute. We are about at the halfway point. No problem. I had no clue where we got to go to the next half, but I do know that going back should be all downhill. So we got that going for us. But for now, we're continuing on our uphill track. I have another 700 foot or so elevation gain to go. I took a brief rest. My heart rate went from 150 beats per minute to 96. So I feel a heck of a lot better after just uh, resting, letting my heart rate get down. Just something more to note, 
<sighs> you remember the last video remote mountain hike apple watch battery lasted about eight miles then it died we couldn't track anymore via apple watch and let's talk about an upgrade so i did apple watch 9 identical uh to the apple watch 7 that i had except this has got a uh, black border that one had a green border which i actually prefer but i put the same band on it so other than a few minor features and a brand new battery it's almost pretty much the same thing and upgraded because you know they give you a decent trade-in if you trade in soon you wait another year or two say that's yeah, working fine go try to trade it in see how much money you get apple gave me a, a kind trade-in so I couldn't pass it up. Besides, this equipment, the Apple Watch, this Garmin that I got, we use these regularly on our hikes. Someday we'll upgrade the GoPro, but for right now, it's working fine for us. All right, I'm reaching another small summit here. I can almost smell kind of a, almost like a pine smell, not really pine, but I can smell the trees. You couldn't really smell this in the desert. So we've clearly gone up some elevation, only 875 foot elevation. And we've got a little bit more to go. All right, let's keep going. Coming through another small wash here. Just one of those areas would have been really tough if we had a vehicle, but we don't. We're on foot. So we're just hiking through this rough terrain and the road continues. This old ancient road we're on. Me up an old, uh, I think this is the old ancient road. Almost looks like a pile of cement here, but it's rock, believe it or not. And it's really got to create traction to walk on it, too. <sighs> Look at that, it looks like a ancient footprint fossil, but it's not. This is no doubt a raging river when it rains. But I'm guessing this is the ancient road. Keep checking GPS every now and then, we're on the right track. On a higher elevation, I'm guessing these are pine. Looks like an old ancient river, wash, whatever it is. Um, if it's a road, it's a very old one. But uh, check GPS, we are on the right track. Coming through this thick brush. I'm not seeing any of the signs of civilization yet, aside from the few minor pieces of trash back there. All right. With those trees. Now, trees like this might have been. I'm not even growing the last time somebody's been through here. What's this? Is that another road up there? Oh, doggone it. That's where we need to go. That looks like a road. And it's not that much of a climb, so... Yeah, we got to check it out. Let's at least see what's at the top. It's a little out of our way, but... You see what looks like a road leading to something. Especially a higher vantage point. Got to check it out. I know you want to know what's up there. <sighs> Maybe nothing, but at least climb this little beast hill. Not even a beast, but a little hill. Let's see what's on the other side. <sighs> oh my gosh. All right. What's up here? A clearing. That maybe is a primitive campsite. And it is. Here's a campfire. Here's the wood they were burning. And uh, very old campfire. And lo and behold, this is exactly three miles from where we started the clock near the trailhead. So we know there's a three mile hike out here. All right, somebody's here. It does look like a great place for campfire campsite it is a clearing i'm just looking around the outskirts to see if there's anything else out here now if you're wondering camping is legal here yes you can camp here and uh if i had to this would make a fantastic campsite it's a wide open area and uh you're not going to be able to really bring anything out here that you can't carry on your back but if you did have vehicles it'd be a great place i'm just kind of looking i don't want to go deep in the brush we don't have time for that See if I see anything out here. Uh, I saw the campfire, some broken glass. That's about it, no real trash. Looks like I might have been here for a very long time. This, uh, this would have been a great campsite for even a group. 
I'm just looking around. And over here is some sort of a dirt pile. Looks like a net mount. And indeed it could be. Some sort of indentation there. What do you think? A hoof mark? Hoof print? Animal? I think so. Is this an old ant mound? It could be. Alright, what else is up here? I'm not seeing anything in this immediate vicinity. Do you? Comment down below if you do. Alright. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything in this immediate vicinity. Now keep in mind, this is a... Uh, to get here, it's a long, long drive from Las Vegas, and it's a long, long drive on dirt, an even longer drive down one of the side roads, and then a three-mile hike. So it, it takes significant effort to get here. But if you want to get away from it all, this is it. Oh, and here's a, uh, an old bottle cap. All right. Can you tell what that says? I can't. Too rusted. Old bottle cap. No, I'm not going to bring that with me. No reason to. But believe it or not, I actually used to collect bottle caps when I was a kid. So if I was like really young, I might consider bringing that and adding it to my collection. But no, I'm not. Now this here is interesting. Here's what I am going to do. There. I was here. My footprint initials. Hopefully that's acceptable. Let's, uh, we came, we saw, we left our mark. Now it's time to go. Okay, let's get out of here. Leave nothing but footprints and your initials were applicable. Back down this small hill to the main road and we'll be out of here. All right, back on this main ancient road, heading uphill on a southerly direction towards this uh, mysterious cross we saw on Google Earth that's in the ground that, hell, at this point might not even still be there, but we'll go to location, see if we can see anything. There's at least a spring nearby we'll check out, so. I'm just off for a quick break here. Making progress. We've already passed the point where the official road ends. It was marked on the map, and we're continuing on where the unofficial road continues on towards the cross and the spring up here. There are flies out here and bugs, but not nearly as much as there were last weekend. Now, that way about one to two miles that one to two miles that way is where we were last weekend and um there was a lot of flies out there every time we stopped we got swarmed and there are flies out here but like i said not not nowhere near as much as there were last week weekend i don't know why last weekend where i was seeing footprints the entire way people footprints one set of footprints about my size shoe so i am seeing footprints today but they appear to be hoof, animal footprints. So I'm not too worried about animals or sheep. Um, they'll charge you if they have a reason to, but it generally will avoid you. Okay, I chose a path through a tree. So you can see it's helping me through this to crawl a little bit uh, over this rocks, because you can't stand up. I should have tried to find a way around it, but I didn't. So I'm crawling. All right, I should do it. Oh man, I don't usually bring knee pads. Don't need them, but I could have used them there. Taking a quick break here, it's noticeably colder up here and there's a slight breeze blowing. So with the sweat on my body, it's, uh, it's cooling me off quick. If I stayed here for any amount of time, um, I'd probably get cold, but I'm gonna keep on moving. I never, I never take a break for long, even for lunch. I do have a military polypro top to put on if it gets too cold. But I don't expect to need that unless I'm caught after dark out here somehow. And uh, if that happens, I would no doubt be in the 20s up here. So I would definitely need it then. And if that happens, uh, if the sun starts going down, I would need to build a shelter out here and quick. It would be really, really cold. Let's keep on going so that doesn't happen and get back at a reasonable hour today. Oh, uh, just a uh, pollen tree. It's a log obstacle. We'll just go under it, not a big deal. And continue on. There are mountain lions up here, like I said last weekend, so you've gotta be vigilant, have a watchful eye out, because the last thing I need is a freaking cat pouncing on me. 
from behind a tree before I have time to draw my weapon. So I'm trying to keep my eyes and ears open. We're making good progress. On the clock, 3.46 miles. Um, heart rate's 129 beats per minute, 1200 foot elevation gain. So we've got about 500 foot elevation gain to go and about one mile. So we're making great progress and almost there. It's weird, I was up here last weekend. I went back, spent the week doing work, the normal stuff at home. And now I'm here and it's like I never even left. It's like, I, don't even, I couldn't even tell you what I did last week. Uh, it's just work stuff, home stuff. But it's like I never even left. It's like I was in these mountains all week and being home was just a dream. A lot of you commented how much you love to be up here and how much I love this. And I said how much I love this. How much Kenny loved being up here. And I can tell you right now, to the best of my knowledge, there is nobody around for miles and miles and miles. Now, on the side road coming in, I did pass the camper. Three guys in a uh, uh, 90s era Ford Bronco. Kind of a cool old Bronco, but three guys camping out there. So that was, uh, I don't know, 15 miles back. But for, I would say for, you know, 10, 15 miles, there is not a single human being around. There could be, but it feels like there's not. And it's just, it's just a really amazing feeling of solitude out here. I really, really just can't relay on the video how amazing it is to be up here, just alone, by yourself, where there is nothing up here, no, per no people. It almost cleanses your soul. All your problems from back in the city, just, they don't follow you up here. So, Kenny Beach disappearing in the mountains? Absolutely, I believe it. I mean, if you have a difficult life or whatever, any problems you have going on, you want to get away from it all, this is the place to do it. This is the place to do it. Come to an obstacle, sit down tree, and uh, probably fell in the last storm out here. Don't see any burn marks. Doesn't look like it was hit by lightning or anything. It just fell, but why? Was there high wind up here maybe? Hard to say. All right. Best way over this, and judging by these broken branches, which I'm guessing or even hoping were left by animals, looks like this is how people are Beasts have been crossing. See all the broken branches? So yeah, people or animals are crossing here and busting branches as they made their way through. Ah, oh, look at all these flies. You know, these high elevations, I'm telling you, for some reason, a lot of flies up here. All right. It's a little strenuous coming up this this wash, but we'll make it. 7,300 foot level, making our way up this wash that I believe it could be an ancient road. And I uh, almost mistook it for a, uh, a branch or something. But check this out. It's a jaw. See the teeth in there? It's a jawbone. Jawbone from something. Where's the rest of the body? Keep going. Let's try for a few moments. Like I said, you can notice how chilly it gets. So, can't help but think, what would I do if it was nighttime and I'm this chilly? Because there's no no doubt going to get in the 20s up here. Um, it's it's cold right now. It feels cold. I mean, it feels fine because I'm moving, but nighttime is going to be cold. Where would I stay? Where to build a shelter? And I was thinking, why not right here? Um, Unless there's a flash flood or any rain, which there isn't any forecast, the Garmin does pull up weather. Um, I could probably dig this out, move these rocks, dig this out for a little place to sleep. Um, cut down some of these tree branches, a bunch of them, there's plenty of them around, and just pile a whole lot of tree branches on here. Maybe even put rocks around the side, and I can make a little improvised one night shelter there. Um, I've got a survival blanket, a survival shelter, wrap myself in those, I'll be like, It'd be like sleeping in tinfoil, but it'll keep you warm. And uh, I could probably do this to survive if I had to sleep out here. Um, just 
something goes through my mind, you gotta always prepare for the worst. Other than that, we're like almost 7,500 foot elevation. You could see trees around. Not what you expect in your Las Vegas, is it? I'm not seeing anything yet. But that could change once we get into the spring. I'm gonna stop on the Wash River Creek when Old Road, whatever that is, and come cross country because this is this is where the GPS shows me we need to go. It's a big clearing up here. And the spring shouldn't be too much further. So we'll see what's up here. Oh. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we have civilization. Do you see what I see? There's a big roll of barbed wire and what may be an animal corral here. Look at this. First sign of civilization. What else is up here? All right, you may have a hard time seeing it, but here we've got some barbed wire tied to trees. And look, look how, look at this. That's the center. How many years do you think it took to get to that point? Wow. I've got to watch for, ooh, I've got to watch for a step. There is barbed wire here and I'm caught on some of this ancient barbed wire. There's no doubt I've been here for probably since the days of the old west. I want to show you real quick this animal corral or whatever it is. It's extremely old. This tree seems to have grown up around it, but the smaller ones went right through the middle. And here it is on a hillside, some sort of barbed wire enclosure. And that's why there's a roll of barbed wire. There's something else over here. Um, a tensioner maybe. Let's see if I can get through here without getting jabbed. Ah, okay, there we go. What's this? Is that for tensioning the barbed wire? It feels like aluminum. I can't tell what it is. If you know what this is, comment below, because I don't know what it is. Okay, I don't know what that is. I just left it there. I'm not gonna take it with me, no reason to. Um, probably very old, but it looks like it's made out of aluminum. I thought I saw something else over here. It was more barbed wire. Gotta be careful, and I trip myself and fall on a rock. Um, maybe an old settlement here, I don't know. I thought I saw something else, a piece of trash or something. Might have been a rock, it's hard to tell. So you come across something like this animal corral, that's a great sign that there could be civilization or some sort of old settlement out here. It's obviously very old, and looking how much is grown through that tree, I would say definitely predates Kenny Beach. But we're going is up a little bit further. But this is an excellent sign that there may be other things up here, artifacts or something. I always look for these big open areas because if you see a cabin or something, some settlement, usually they're gonna be in a kind of an open area like this. Let's keep going. Okay. Well, that's encouraging. I guess we found something out here. Coming straight up the hillside. Like I said, there could be a cabin or something right up beyond these trees. You wouldn't even see it. Well, you gotta just keep your eyes open and be alert. Okay, let's keep going. Based on my calculation, the spring is up this way and it may be a little bit of a hike. It looks like it's some rugged terrain uphill. So at this point, I've got 12.30 on the clock, um, four and a half miles from our start, I'm gonna stop and have lunch. We've got um, um, breakfast, um, we got some kind of breakfast thing, freeze dried food, and we'll have that. So let me go ahead and uh, pour some water in that, get that going, we'll take a quick break here, and then we'll uh, begin to trek up to that spring, which should, shouldn't be too far, but it might be kind of rugged, so we'll do that. Our breakfast skillet is almost done, uh, taking a quick break in place here. Um, got some cliff bars, Halloween, Candy, which is nice, nice, and of course, we don't think we need that, hopefully. Binoculars, um, 
poly pro in case we need it it is getting colder here i'm tempted to put that on right now because it's cold and chilly up here but um i'm gonna wait for this to uh, give another minute or so and we've got some water and then uh we're gonna get started that animal corral is just right there so we're right by the animal corral so clearly this was an old settlement at one time and where you see one thing you usually see more so that animal corral there's got to be more stuff around here and um, what I know is right up that valley somewhere, there's a, there's a spring and that's where we're gonna go next, but not till we eat. So let's eat. I was reading these wet wipes with me too. They're really great. I use them to wipe the hands and uh, I always wash up before I eat because that's one thing I learned in the military. Field sanitation is important. So um, I usually just wipe up here. I did end up putting on that polypro top because it's really chilly up here. Um, Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> Breakfast skillet done. That was good. Polypro's uh, top is really doing a good job keeping me warm up here because it's chilly. And uh, Baby Ruth, I don't even know they still made these. I don't need a whole lot of candy, but up here, uh, it'll keep you going. So, yeah, it's important to keep your body in uh, well fed up here when you're when you're deep in the mountains. We're going to look around, um, finish, our, finish our lunch and look around and then head up to that spring and see if there's anything else out here. And that animal crawl over there, we would have missed. If we went down there, we would have missed it. So go to show, show you how easy it is to miss things out here. Let's finish lunch and we'll get back. All right, folks, our campsite here on this log is cleaned up just like uh, we were never even here. Anyway, um, this is the area where I thought there was a cross. It is a clearing here. Uh, maybe just the way the trees are cleared, it looked like a cross. It's really hard to say, um, but it's cold out here. I took off the polypro, military polypro, and put the, uh, you know, because I didn't, I didn't want to start sweating under it and just uh, that'll make it even colder so if i have to put on i will but i think once we start moving again uh because i'm starting to shiver once we start moving again i think it'll be fine i did put on the vinyl gloves believe it or not these these bad boys do keep your hands warm so i'm wearing those for now i do have my regular uh mechanics gloves um where the hell i might as well put those on over because it's cold out here man it feels like the snow i'm almost starting to shiver um but yeah, with the wind and everything up here, winter is definitely coming. Um, I'm just looking around to see if I see anything else. Cause like I said, this animal corral, we would have missed it uh, if we had just walked right by it. So I'm gonna do a quick look around. If I see anything else, I don't. If not, we're gonna head up to uh, the spring up there and check that out. Hopefully it's not too rugged of a climb. All right, so mechanics gloves on with vinyl gloves underneath. That's actually a trick I learned from riding motorcycles. Um, when it's cold out there, you're on the bike, on the road, um, a set of vinyl gloves, you don't have liners. Vinyl gloves will help keep them warm. And already my hands are starting to warm up. I mean, it's, it, it feels as cold as the snow out here, but there's obviously no snow. Um, and I work in this animal crawl. I don't want to get stuck in this barbed wire again. I don't see anything else, um, but uh, right over there, up in the mountains where that um, looks like there's water, uh, kind of a um, draw or something, I guess. That's supposedly where the spring is, so that's where I'm going to go. There may be some infrastructure at the spring. Uh, State of Nevada, they do maintain these springs for uh, animal guzzlers, so that may be it. But anytime where there's water, you just never know. So uh, we'll mark our ways up there and, and see. Traversing over rough terrain. All right, what's this? We've got another structure here, and some of it's burnt. Is this part of an animal corral, or is this something else? I think I see something over there. We'll check out in just a moment. Um, somebody put this here. I don't know what it is. There may have been a, a sh structure here at some point in time. So look around. You may see something. I don't. I do see something man-made up here. I don't know what it is. It's right there. Um, something washed down this, uh, this wash or whatever it is, I guess. You see it? Some pieces of metal. Piece of furniture or something. Washed down from up here. What else is up there? What else is up here? What else is out here? It's really rugged to climb and where we're going is right that way. But if this washed down, this, there's gotta be civilization up there. Let's go to the spring first and then we'll make a determination if we're gonna go up that way. But in the meantime, we'll check this out. 
it's just it's just metal it's been here a long time and i don't really know what it is i'll watch my step i don't want to slip and fall but yeah it's just a piece of metal there's some wire on it might be some more wood or something i can't really tell anyway let's walk towards the spring Like I said, if it's furniture or metal or something and it's there, it'll wash from up that way. But let's come up here and hopefully the spring isn't too difficult to get to. All right, this is promising. Here's the can. And it's a tin can, not aluminum. So look how they opened it. Somebody didn't have a can opener. They used a nail or some kind of a spike and just punctured it that way to drink. I guess that's what you do when I have a can opener. Oh, tin can. What else is up here? Let's check GPS real quick, make sure we are going the right way to the spring. So traversing this rugged train up the spring, we should be up around this bend somewhere. I think I found something else up here too. Some bones, old bones, and uh, part of a balloon that had drifted out here. We are way out here though. There you go, bones in a balloon. More bones. Looks like part of the spine right there. What else is out here? What else is out here? It's a trail of bones out here. Geez, look at this. Old bones. Can't tell if they're human. Can't tell what the rest of the body is. Okay, there's more bones up here. Jesus, criminy. Something must have killed something and drug it up here because here's the rest of the skeleton, or at least a lot of it. Look at this. Look at this. Spine, about the size of a human, but I don't think it's human. hard to tell our bones there Ugh. is it pelvis I can't tell what do you think no skull I'm definitely alert for mountain lions or anything else I might run into out here that's why my GoPro is in the uh, left hand not my right hand just keep going more bone it's tough I've got to watch where I'm going and watch these hills to make sure nothing's sneaking up on us Take a quick break here and check the GPS, see how close we are to that spring. Should be right around here, even up there just a little bit. Rugged stuff. Going to GPS, the spring is just right up here. Just right up here. I'm watching where I step, so you keep your eyes out. See if you see anything. Some of these are seasonal springs. Summer year round, we can actually see water. I'm trying to walk and watch my surroundings. I don't see a spring, do you? I see more bones right there. But I don't see a spring. Unless. I do see a spring. 
we're gonna have to hike up this go to see if I see some moisture up here. Yeah, what a rock. What a rough hike. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're on. This is dangerous stuff here. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Careful. There it is, there's a the trough. This is the spring. Okay. Okay. Be careful getting to it. Like I said, a lot of time, Stay Nevada personnel put a put these troughs here for animals to drink out of. And Jesus Christ is frozen. I told you it's cold out here. Oh man. Well, there's a water pipe right there. I was gonna clear this out, but uh, it's frozen. Oh man. Okay. Okay. Nothing else around here. I can't move this log because it's frozen in the water. But behind it, you can see kind of a pipe. I'm guessing comes to the spring. Maybe I can get some leverage and move it up. I can't do it. Not safely. Okay. I was going to clear these logs out of here. But the spring's frozen, the trough is frozen, I can't do it, so somebody else, whoever's responsible for these, will have to clear these logs out. But they're frozen in here. All right, well, we came, we saw, we documented. Let's get, get back to the bottom of the hill and see if we're gonna go any further up that little draw and find more evidence of civilization. Real quick, like I said, um, the water, this is spring-fed water. You can see the pipe right behind under this log there. They would normally feed this, just just a trickle to feed this, and animals will come and drink the water, but the wintertime is frozen. This makes you wonder where they get their water, but at any rate, um, yeah, most of these springs, you may see a catch basin like this for water, and that's uh, to support the wildlife out here. But uh, this whole thing is frozen solid. We are about at the uh, oh, 8,000 foot level, and uh, there's no snow here right now, but I would imagine not, it's not gonna be long before there is snow here. But I can assure you, it is as cold as it would be if the snow is here, it's cold. That's why I got my gloves on. Uh, and I'm moving, so I'm not freezing like I was down there at lunch. Okay, let's carefully get ourselves back down the hill. And I think this way will work fine. I'm showing the altimeter here. Garmin showing 77, 39 feet. Um, so we're up there, yeah. But uh, we're gonna keep going and uh, head down the hill now. A lot of birds flying around, probably wondering what I'm gonna, what I'm doing here. And I'm actually kind of wondering what I'm doing here. But uh, we're gonna start making our way down this hill. And I think it might have been better to go the other way because I think we'll get a better grip over there. But it's fine. If I'm rolling film, something happens, you'll see it. <laughs> Almost lost my balance there. Okay. Okay. Almost looks like a path here, doesn't it? Animal path or people path. Not many people come out here. back in, the little, in this little draw that I'm sure is a raging river during rain, but right now it's dry. 
And there, my friend, to the skull. Right there. All right, internet sluice, what is this? I don't think it's a deer, not a person. What do you think? Comment below. All right, so we're making our way down to that uh, area where we found the animal corral and had lunch. And uh, on the clock, I've got 140. And I expect it to get dark around 5 p.m. It is daylight savings time. So around 5 p.m. it's gonna get dark. And uh, I don't have a huge issue getting back in the dark because I know it's pretty much straight shot downhill. And uh, got off-road lighting on the truck. And we seem to have a cell signal the entire way. So I'm not really too concerned about that. Nothing really extreme climbs. So at this time, I'm going to go up this way a little bit, simply because there's that metal contraption, whatever it is, we found in the in the wash here. They surely must have washed down from up there somewhere. So we'll go up there just a little bit, see if there's anything else. If there is, we'll continue on. If there's not, we'll just call it a day and head back. I mean, we did find some things up here. So like I said, we're gonna continue up here a little bit, see if there's anything else, any other signs of civilization. Okay, now we did come in on the opposite side of the mountain, but if you've seen the lost truck, search for lost truck, and lost truck found video, we found an old logging truck from the 1930s, deep in the mountains. There was other signs of civilization nearby. A lot of cans, um, some foundations. That area is not that much far from here, so this, this animal corral, this uh, metal thing, whatever it is, is almost certainly from that stuff over there. And if there is a second truck out here, like we talked about in the last uh, remote mountain expedition, could very well be up here in this area. I'm not sure how far we're gonna go, but um, I'd like to go all the way, but you know, you can't cover every step of the mountain. You only do what you can only do. But uh, if I remember correctly, it's really not that far. If that the old truck is probably within, a, I'm guessing within a mile or less than a mile from here, that old truck, um, the one we did find. So yeah, there's more than likely stuff there. We'll go a little ways, but uh, like I said, 1.30, we've got to think about turning back pretty soon because by the time it's four, the sun will have already been going down and 5 p.m. it's dark. Let's keep going. I don't know if you could see it here, but there's a woodpecker over there. I could see it on a branch pecking the wood with his red head. I'll be quiet, see if you can hear him. Did you hear that? Just a woodpecker. Okay. I think I'm gonna go at least to where the sun is shining up there and see if there's anything. And then uh, think about check GPS, think about turning back. Let's go. So far on the clock, we've got uh, five miles, 1950 elevation gain, uh, three hours, 40 minutes, and I got 1.48 p.m. Which means we got about three hours of light. And more than likely, we'll be driving back home in the dark. And that's fine. I just, last weekend, I didn't want to hike over unfamiliar terrain over mountains, climbing stuff like this in the dark. That's what I didn't want to do. For at least to get disoriented. Just keep going. All right, just for the record, the old truck we did find is three quarters of a mile that way. And uh, judging on Google Earth, I don't, know, I don't know what I saw on Google Earth, but anyway, this is the only viable way through this kind of wash up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to maybe where that tree is, see if it curves around that way like I suspect it does. I don't think I'm gonna go much further. I really suspect there's more There's more things up in these mountains. I was told there's a second truck up here. Haven't found it yet. We've found an animal corral back there. There's an animal corral up here. Um, it's probably all connected. 
Um, but you know, you need to have, you need to spend a week in these mountains exploring the stuff. And even then it's some rugged terrain to get over. And if you did that, you still may not find everything. So these hikes and expeditions, a lot of it's luck. Will we find anything or won't we find anything? You do your homework, you check Google Earth, you make educated guesses. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. We didn't get completely skunked today. We found that animal corral. I did drop a pin and get that marked, so I'll connect the dots with our known locations that we've been. But uh, so far, I'm not really seeing anything. And I wouldn't expect a settlement to be on the side of a mountain like this or a hillside like this. So I'm not seeing anything else. I'm gonna call it and not go any further here. I can't really tell which way this goes, but the old truck and the other settlements we found in the old truck videos are this way. So we'd have to come up here and curve around. And you can see how rough that is. And with a minimum four, four and a half miles hike in front of us, even though it's downhill, I don't wanna push you too much. See, this is the addicting part of hiking. You just want to see what's right around the corner. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go right up there to that tree, see what's around the corner, come back, go up this hill for a vantage point, see if there's anything up there. You either go straight down the hill or back down the wash. It just kills me to come out here and think that I might have missed something. So last weekend we were out, we were following an old road till we called it, did that monstrous mountain climb, and... Uh, got back on unfamiliar terrain. But that old road we were on kept going. I wasn't seeing artifacts like we are today. So no reason, no way to know if there's anything out there. But it kept going. I just wanna follow it and get back after dark. All right. This way, possible um, uh, draw or look like some water drainage there at one time. This way, could have been an old road. I know I said to stop at this tree, but I'm gonna go just a little bit further. Okay, nothing. I'm gonna drop a pin and start back straight up over that hill and see what's on top of that hill. Okay, we're climbing this small hill, like I said, we would to get to the top. Better vantage point, maybe nothing up here, I don't know. But uh, we found that animal corral, so there may very well be other settlements in the area. You never know. You're almost going to get lucky. It just looks like a flat area up top. That's what we're doing. Okay. Okay. This is more than likely can be the highest point of our entire hike. Oh my gosh. Okay. 2,000 foot elevation gain so far. Okay. Oh, I can feel my heart beating. 150 beats per minute. Let me take a quick water break. Right now we're just going cross country through the woods. Uh, we came in down there in that little draw and uh, see all the pine needles down there. I guess they're pine trees. Looking for any signs of civilization. Like I said, that uh, giant mysterious X that appears, well, I don't know if it was man-made or not. It may have been just the way the train was, but it sure looked man-made to me. But there was um, a corral and evidence, like a little settlement down there perhaps. But I'm just trying to see on the side of this hill if there's anything else. Looks like there may have been some structures there at one time. The uh, cold Nevada desert, or the Nevada desert, dry Nevada desert, is very good at preserving things, but uh, Eventually nature takes back everything. So some of the settlements you see may be nothing more than a couple of pieces of wood. All right.
come to a rough area here, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. You can already see the sun behind us kind of going down. Now we'll just come down this hill and come down to the draw down there again, not a big deal. That's just really, it's just a little steep. keep going thing about when you're walking like this downhill and your shoes and feet are twisting it, it really loosens the boot so I need to stop soon and retighten my laces because uh, they're just not as snug as and comfortable as I like them because things like this like I said they just really kind of your foot moves around they stretch the boot around and they just loosen up a little bit and not as comfortable. Like a piece of burnt wood or something. All right, here we are. Once you're on relatively flat ground, I'll stop and tighten the laces, but I don't want to waste time stopping right now if we're still coming down the steep stuff and my feet are still moving around. All right. There we go. From here on out, hopefully it should be all downhill smooth sailing back to the uh, Currahead where we parked this morning. Right now we're just going cross country through the woods. Uh, we came in down there in that little draw and uh, see all the pine needles down there, I guess through pine trees. <sighs> Looking for any signs of civilization. Like I said, that uh, giant mysterious X that appears, well, I don't know if it was man-made or not. It may have been just the way the train was, but it sure looked man-made to me. But there was, um, a corral and evidence like a little settlement down there perhaps but I'm just trying to see on the side of this hill if there's anything else looks like there may have been some structures there at one time the uh, cold Nevada desert or the Nevada desert dry Nevada desert is very good at preserving things but uh, eventually nature takes back everything so some of the settlements you see may be nothing more than a couple of pieces of wood all right, come to a rough area here. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. You can already see the sun behind us kind of going down. Now we'll just come down this hill and come down to the draw down there again. Not a big deal. That's just really, it's just a little steep. keep going thing about when you're walking like this downhill and your shoes and feet are twisting it, it really loosens the boot so I need to stop soon and retighten my laces because uh, they're just not as snug as and comfortable as I like them because things like this like I said they just really kind of your foot moves around they stretch the boot around and they just loosen up a little bit and they're not as comfortable. Like a piece of burnt wood or something. All right, 
here we are. Once you're on relatively flat ground, I'll stop and tighten the laces, but I don't want to waste time stopping right now for still coming down the steep stuff and my feet are still moving around. All right. There we go. From here on out, hopefully it should be all downhill smooth sailing back to the uh, Currahead where we parked this morning. All right, coming back, here's this piece of metal that's somehow coming to this wash. Um, hard to say where it came from. We walked up there a little bit. I didn't see any settlements. It could have came from above in the hill somewhere. And indeed, there could be something right up in those trees. You can't even tell. And yeah, that is the sun going down. It's gonna be dark soon. Um, right over here, looks like there may have been a structure at one time. Hard to tell. There's an animal corral up on the hill. And this right here, um, I don't know, could have been a primitive structure, lean-to, um, looks like some wood or logs placed here long ago. And um, like I said, this could have been some sort of a shelter. The cowboys put their animals up on the hill over there and may have uh, bedded down here for the night or something just as they're passing through. Hard to say what it is. Up there is a spring, frozen solid, of course, because uh, it's that time of year. And uh, nothing else over here that I could see, just that piece of metal, an old can up there. So there's evidence of civilization out here. Did we see a cross? No. What is that cross? I don't know. Was it uh, coincidence, maybe? I don't know. It looked man-made. You know, they say uh, the good Lord does not create in straight lines, and these were straight lines, look like a cross. But, you know, you guys see things in my videos all the time that look like they're not natural, but are natural. So we came, we saw, we filmed, and uh, we didn't see the cross, but I'm not going to say that there wasn't anything here, because there is indeed something here, evidence of a settlement. Does that mean there was a cross at one time? Well, I'll tell you what, if there was a cross, what I saw on Google Earth would have to be from here all the way over there or something. And, and this is uneven ground, so I don't see how somebody would make it. Unless somehow they cut tr trees down um, in the shape of a cross and you can't really see it except from air, that's possible. I don't know. Hard to say. But trees like this small one here surely weren't here when they... Uh, we're building that animal corral. All right. Just taking one last look up on this hillside to the corral. Again, you can see how deep this barbed wire is in the trees. Clearly they've been here for a long time. When we came up this way, because there's a roll of barbed wire over there, Looking through the trees, I'm not seeing anything else. Whew. No, nothing else. Okay. Let's come down this way and head on, start heading out. We've come across more bones. There's one there, and there's some here. You can't, again, you can't tell if they're human. They don't really look human though. There's a lot of bones out here. This one's still got some meat on it. That can't be that old then. Look at that. What do you think? You just never know what you find out here if you have your eyes open. That's weird, everything just got silent. No wind, no animals, no anything. That makes me nervous. Dead silence, something about to happen. I'm feeling really uneasy right now. 
I'm feeling really uneasy like something's about to happen. Maybe I'm just freaking myself out, I don't know. Let me tell you something, folks. People, people have a sixth sense. And you can tell when something's about to happen. So I'm just being really careful and keep my eyes open. Is that a hoof or a paw? for any signs of movement. That's why I don't want to be out here after dark. Animals come out and start getting bold. I just had a really bad feeling up there. I don't know why. I can make sure I'm not being followed. And yes, I had my hand on my firearm the whole time. I just, I don't know, just something spooked me up there. I just had a really bad feeling, started getting the chills. Still kind of iffy right around here, but up back up there, I don't know, I just had a feeling something was about to happen. Party balloon. I tell you, there could be a mountain lion right behind a tree. <clears throat> you wouldn't even see him until it's too late. That's why you gotta keep your eyes open. Pay attention to your surroundings. As far as I know, a mountain lion is the only predator out here to worry about. I'm not gonna get attacked by anything else, I don't, I don't think. Unless you talk about the paranormal or cryptids or aliens or things like that. But as far as science is concerned, I think mountain lion's the biggest predator out here. All right, coming downhill on this wash or ancient road is significantly easier than it was going back up there. Um, my feet and legs feel fine. I did this here 12 miles last weekend and rest up. And, you know, it's benefit of staying in shape. You could do hikes like this. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is an old ancient road. 
leading to that corral up there and uh, that was near the spring, that old kind of old settlement. No history on what that place is, but I know if I had kept on going for about half a mile, three quarters of a mile, we would have got to where the uh, the old truck that I found before was, that old 1930s truck they were using as a sawmill. So that's about uh, half a mile further north of the position we stopped at. But because it's all uphill over rugged terrain, that's a long, hard half mile. So we decided to turn back. Dang, that tree just reached out and grabbed me. Anyway, yeah, we decided to turn back and heading back to the truck right now, the long hauler of the truck. We've got at least uh, three, three and a half miles. Probably be dark by the time we get there. But we may, we're, pr we're probably gonna see an epic sunset on the way down, so. Yeah, that to look forward to, maybe. Here's a fallen tree passed on the way and I decided to bypass it. Um, it looks like the tree, it looks like uh, some big giant just simply pushed this tree down. I mean, it doesn't, I mean, maybe it's dead. I mean, it's really hard to say, but I mean, for a big tree like this to fall down, it would take like a big gust of wind or something. But yeah, look at that. You can see the splintering and everything. Strange. All right, coming to the mountain, this nice route here is a good place to stop and adjust my boots and then we'll uh, continue on. All right, I just cinched up the boots. They do feel snug, um, better than they did before. They feel like a glove, which is nice. So instead of your foot moving around, your boots move with your foot. They're a little tighter than I'd like, but uh, I know the more I walk, they're gonna loosen up, so it's fine. We're just making our way down this ancient road. I'm gonna clock 6.32 miles, 2,000 foot elevation gain. Four hours, 31 minutes, ain't nothing but a thing. We did 12 miles last weekend and I feel fine. No big deal. And uh, the rest of the way back to the truck should be somewhat downhill, um, like this. You know, not somewhat flat ground, nothing really rough, no real rough stuff for climbing. So it's not a big deal. The only thing, see 2.30, 3.30, 4.30, sundown to 4.30, my friends. Which means 4.30 on, that's when it's going to start getting dark. We got about two hours. Which means more than likely, by the time we get to the truck, it's going to probably be dark. And then, almost certainly, driving out of here is going to be dark. It's fine, I've got plenty of lights in the truck, off-road lights and everything, so we are right. We've got GPS and uh, and I do know the area. Now we are a little closer to Area 51 than normal. I'd guesstimate around 30 miles maybe, maybe 40 miles, I don't know. So who knows what may be flying around at night. It's a Saturday night. I remember walking on this rock on the way up, so I know we're going the right way. Not that I had much doubt. Um, it's chilly, but it's very noticeably warmer than it was up in the mountain when we were up there by that, uh, um, by the spring, the frozen spring with the water frozen solid. I would guess, hell, I don't know, that particular spot at night might get into the teens. They're even colder, hard to say. But for water being frozen like that, it'll have to be in the, what, 30s? So yeah, 20s or teens tonight up there for sure. Jesus, another big break. That's pretty fresh. Somebody was up here. There you go. Wait a minute. I wonder if those are our boot prints. All right, now I feel dumb. That is our boot print. Yeah, it is. All right, just go to show you, I said it was fresh. It sure was fresh, few hours old. Ours, let's keep going. All right, now it's looking more like a road. This is the ancient road we were on before it turned into a wash going up in the mountains. But why is there an ancient road here? Where does it lead? I didn't see anything out here other than a clearing or two. I'm tired. My feet are tired. I don't know if it's because of the boots or because it's, we just did 7.39 miles, the 2100 foot elevation gain, 
in four hours and 58 minutes. It's a lot. But for the most part, it's all downhill. Sun's not down yet. I'm hoping we can get these wide open areas when the sun goes down. It makes me nervous to be in the brush like this in the dark. You never know what's gonna jump out at you. It's coming down this long steep hill. Remember these logs and everything, all the stuff I'm guessing washed down here during the rains. Rode it away the center where there was water flowing. We came up this on the way out and we're coming down on the way back. Not a big deal, just a rough spot. And then we'll uh, be back on somewhat flat ground. All right, sun's going down still. Just check GPS. One and a quarter miles. My feet are sore, but I'm fine. I guess still got some steam left in me. There's a hawk up there. You can see him flying away. Pretty sure it's a hawk. He's circling. Thought he was gonna come and attack us. There he is up there. Looking for something. Well, let him go about our business and go him back. Let him go about his business, we'll go about ours. Let's keep going. Oh, he's coming back. You see him? Is it a hawk or is it a crow? I can't tell. Anyway, we ain't got time to watch him fly. We gotta get back to the truck because you can see it's already starting to get dark. We've got a little bit ways to go. About a mile or so maybe. Let's keep putting one foot in front of the other and we'll get there. Coming through another small wash here. We're going across country diagonally and uh, in hopes of getting back to the main road we came in on. We should be up here a little bit. We're all going kind of sort of the same way back to the truck. We just got off the path a little bit is all. All right, about halfway in between the wash we are in and the road. So we just got to keep going um, this way. That'll lead us to the road, but this direction will lead us back to the truck. So I know it's blurry, don't worry. I, I can see it. Let's keep going. I see a clearing way up there. I want to say that's the trailhead. I think it is. So we just got to make it to that clearing and we're, we're, we're home free. Got to go with this direction towards the main road and then that way that clearing went up there that I'm fairly certain is the trailhead. Signs of civilization, a couple of old cans. And over here is an aging campfire. Long time ago, more cans. I saw a uh, plastic tent stake broken off and stuck in the ground over there. So clearly somebody's camping out here, but it may have been a long time ago. 70s or 80s maybe. Well, there's a can, it's got a pull tab, modern aluminum, so. Can't be that old. This, I think I'm guessing is the road. Looks like it. Should be it. And it should lead us right back at the campsite. Not the campsite, the uh... Is this the road? Looks like it. Should lead us right back to the trailhead. You know, all of a sudden you're walking to come across something. That's the truck right there. I don't know if you could see it. I wasn't even thinking I'm that close yet, but all of a sudden, boom, here we are at the trailhead and there's a truck right there. Well, we've made it back. On the clock, 9.84 miles, um, six hours, 2,068 foot elevation gain, deep up in those mountains somewhere. There is evidence of a uh, civilization, old animal corral, uh, a spring, and beyond uh, that saddle up there, I believe is the old truck, I think, somewhere. Anyway, we came, we saw, we did what we set out to do. And uh, that, folks, is it for this adventure. If you like what you see, please subscribe. It helps out the channel. Uh, more subscribers, more likes uh, will spread the, the channel and increase the, uh, 
uh, ranking in Google's search algorithm and more people will see it and get to enjoy it. So by liking and subscribing, you're sharing the video so other people can see it. And uh, you know, a lot of people love this kind of stuff. They love coming outside. They're not able to get out here and they like the outdoors. So I'm not gonna ramble on. That's it for this adventure. Um, got a long drive ahead of us, at least an hour or so back to um, pavement where we air up and then head on home and take a well-deserved shower and rest. You didn't really think that was the end, did you? Come on, you want to see where this goes as bad as I do. Let's go check it out. All right, this is making me really nervous. But I think we can make it. I'm gonna put the GoPro away and drive with both hands. I'll show, I'll, uh, I'll film something's exciting. All right, something up here, we got a sign. No off-road vehicles. Must be in their road. Let's at least take a look around. Look around. All right. Looks like an old campsite. Not that old if there's uh, aluminum cans in there. Looks like a wash. It may go in a ways, I'm not sure. No off-road vehicles, but it's pretty rough for an off-road vehicle anyway. Well, nothing here but an old campsite, so what I'm going to do is turn around and just start heading back. It's getting dark and uh, the temperature on the truck's at 49 degrees, which I believe it's gonna get a lot colder quicker as the sun goes down. Now we know what's here. Let's get out of here. Oh, I don't like driving this stuff. It's really rough, rocky stuff, and it's just it's just really dangerous and really kind of gnarly. So obviously I shouldn't be filming doing this if you're focusing on driving, but um, just take it slow, go straight ahead, watching like a hawk for obstacles. And uh, if you're careful, you'll make it. All right, so we did check down that road and uh, saw that it just dead ends at a campsite. It is freezing out here. So you could see an absolutely awesome sun, um, sunset out there. It is, uh, what time is it? 4.43 and the sun is going down. Now out here, you could see, um, you know, kind of the clouds and everything over the sky, kind of a nice orange color. That's where we were. It's freezing now. It would have been brutal cold up in those mountains. I'm glad we got out when we did. But uh, that's it for this adventure. Time to ride off in the sunset, my friends. If you like what you see, please subscribe and like. And until the next time, see you on the next adventure. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the videos, please subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified when I post a new one. All of my videos are unscripted as they happen. I can't promise they'll be exciting, but I can promise they'll be 100% real. My name is Steve from Las Vegas, and these are my adventures.